Cody, Daniel, in terms of today and all the things you've heard about in terms of the security industry moving forward, professionalization, education, where we're, where we're at today as an industry, where we want to be uh, in the future, what's really resonated with you and what are you going to take away? I guess the diversification of, of what a security manager is as an organization. Um, it was interesting to hear from uh, some of the interviews today what security managers are doing that would have generally been considered outside the scope of a security manager. Um, particularly social issues like dealing with homeless people. It just really goes to show, I guess, uh, the extent at which the security in industry is diversifying and probably why uh, the importance of professionalisation is probably inherent in that. I've always known security is quite a broad church, but it seems the professionals that have gathered in the room today are very happy to embrace change, uh, very happy to think outside the square and to really try new and different things to make sure that we are doing our job of protecting people, uh, protecting the organisation's assets and the information and we're willing to try any strategy that could potentially do that um, and save the organisation money at the end of the day. And that's been really heartening to hear that uh, the industry as a whole seems quite happy to tackle challenges in unique and interesting ways and really try everything and see what sticks. Drawing on the fact that you guys have recently completed degrees in security and some of the discussion we've had today. What have you learnt from your degrees that have set you up to, lead, to, to manage this diversified industry that you're embarking on? The greatest lesson I received from my degree, which I've applied uh, throughout the moment I joined the security industry in a professional role, was the ability to adapt to any context and do it quickly, uh, learn about the organisation and use that knowledge to be able to identify uh, the threats that pose a risk and the vulnerabilities. The degree has really taught me how to uh, embrace core business values and then provide security on top of those business values. So everything that I will do as a professional will be to communicate in the language of the business, ensure that I'm attempting to enhance business operations wherever I can, whether that be embedding resilience or providing uh, a new revenue stream if possible based on security services that we provide. Uh, and what I've heard today has really given me some really good perspectives and unique ideas that could be implemented in the future uh, wherever I may end up. Now how does that translate into um, succession planning for, in terms of what you've seen today as well? There is a level of engagement that's required from industry to meet, I guess, new people to industry that have degrees uh, who have already uh, engaged in industry through getting a degree. Uh, that's the first proactive step. But a lesson I've learned today as well uh, and, and throughout my experience so far is the senior people within an organisation that are focused on security have a diverse network of people that they've uh, come to know throughout a, diver a diverse career. Uh, these are people that they draw on for information uh, from other sectors um, and this is something that we haven't developed yet. Uh, coming into the industry a lot sooner than they probably did, that's, that's something that we need to develop uh, which we can't get through other sources and when we're doing risk assessments we have very limited access to, I guess, intelligence products. Um, so we really do rely on other information sources that we can't access ourselves. And that's something that we can't develop at that stage. And that's something that we need industry participation from to meet us halfway. At the moment, there is a underlying want and need for undergraduate professionals entering the security industry. But that, uh, from the industry's perspective, they may not have taken the requisite steps to make that abundantly clear to people firstly starting the degree, uh, looking at starting the degree and coming out of the degree. Speaking to pretty much everybody here today and just in general conversations that I've had with other security professionals uh, around Australia and even worldwide, they do want highly educated people to enter the industry but our pathways to do so are quite limited at this stage. There's no formalised entry process in terms of graduate, uh, graduate pathways outside of the traditional consulting sector or government sector. Uh, to get into the management space, you generally need to do a bit of side skirting to get into those positions. Uh, I think industry really needs to recognise that fact and, and start uh, understanding what it is we can bring to the table and really starting to mentor and help us and aid us in moving forward. So you, you've seen uh, the aptitudes that, that certain individuals have and, and, you, and you can understand that there's a, that there is a need for that higher intellect and education to come into our industry. What do you think would be a personal challenge for you 
individually to get to that position. I know there's there's time that that's got to go under the bri water under the bridge to to get you with the experience. But what do you think is going to be your biggest personal issues? Biggest intellectual challenge for me, uh, I guess it's really pushing my comfort zone and boundaries and getting out there and networking with people that aren't just in the industry. Daniel sort of touched on it earlier where. Uh, security professionals are very multidisciplinary in the issues and the risks and the threats that we're dealing with. We need to be able to put on a lot of various hats. So whilst we may be trained in security methodologies, we still need to be able to think like in some cases like a biologist or in other cases like a, a just a general manager. We need to be able to move between very technical and limited scope to very broad social issues and apply treatment patterns along that entire spectrum of issues. So that intellectually that's very difficult to do and the only way to get better at it is to talk to more people and that takes time to build those networks and it also uh, requires a lot of self-dedication and putting yourself out there and being exposed to new ideas and I think that'll be the biggest challenge for me. In the short term I think my biggest challenge is uh, learning to tailor my communication towards my stakeholder who I'm engaging with. Uh, coming from academia directly uh, I guess in terms of business communications that takes time to learn. I'm now required to continue my education. Uh, I, I choose to do that. Um, so now I'm jumping between communicating in business and then writing essays again through further education. And I guess it's, it's just putting on those hats and taking them off and I think that's the biggest challenge so far. There's obviously a lot of talk about uh, getting young people involved in wanting to study and things like that. I as an online student obviously not being on campus, I don't know what the talk is on campus about security studies. How do you think we can get more young people involved in studying security? It's a difficult question because if you ask a first year student why they're studying security, they probably couldn't give you I guess a reasonable answer, or I certainly couldn't answer that question. Because um, you don't know security until you've been a couple of years in, and it'll, it'll click at that moment halfway through your degree where you're like, okay, I understand exactly what I'm being taught, and I can apply that to different contexts. How you would approach students, I guess, is, is, is difficult, because everyone has perceptions of security prior to actually joining the industry, and it's about managing those perceptions, and perhaps I guess interacting in a way that's managing those perceptions and steering them towards what the correct perceptions are for security. It's um, about, I guess, making the industry more relevant, uh, actually being slightly more transparent in what we actually do, because there's very little appreciation within the broader population about what security actually is. There's still the perception of the security guard standing at the front of wherever you may be, the nightclub, what have you which is a very, very small part of what it is that we do. There's no appreciation for the professional side, the corporate security guys. Uh, the other perception that we need to combat is anyone coming into a security degree is going to be a spook. It's going to be working overseas, kicking down doors, uh, stealing sensitive information from other governments. That's not what we do. We need to start bringing those perceptions in and actually educating people, uh, parents, high school kids, uh, pretty much anyone, the next generation coming up, we need to tell them what security is, where it's going, and what they can do if they decide to do this degree and enter this industry. If they have correctly managed perceptions when they enter the degree, they can leverage what electives they have to perhaps look at other areas outside of security. So with a business focus, or a finance focus, or a management focus, anything that is a transferable skill set which would allow them to interact well within a security business.